Part-time self-employment, or the classic side business, is currently almost on everyone's lips again. In the past few days, I have read questions about this relatively often in the comments section and have actually spoken with our clients about it. And the topic keeps coming up again and again. There are a few things that I see and hear repeatedly in this context. These are misconceptions, myths, or generally misunderstandings about the topic of part-time businesses. And the first point is a very fundamental one. I keep frequently hearing questions about potential tax benefits for side businesses because one is already paying taxes through their main job. And more. So, one might think that being part-time self-employed offers some kind of exemption or advantage, but the clear answer is no, it does not. One can even take it a step further. The tax office does not care at all whether you are self-employed part-time or full-time. In most cases, the tax office doesn't even know that you are. So when I look at tax returns, especially the income tax return, there is no function where I could indicate whether it is a full-time or part-time self-employment. The tax office is essentially only interested in your revenue, but above all in your profit. Because your income tax is simply always calculated based on your total income. How much time you have spent generating this income is simply of no concern to the tax office in the tax calculation. You can work one hour a week or 100 hours a week. The tax office only cares about what is left for you at the end, so they can calculate the income tax on that. And that's why this status simply does not exist for the tax office besides business. This status does exist and with that we come to the second point regarding social security, mainly health insurance. Because if you become self-employed full-time, you not only have to pay taxes but also health insurance. But with part-time self-employment, you have in fact a significant advantage compared to those who are self-employed full-time. In fact, you are certainly, at the very least, initially at the beginning, covered by your main job. This means that it only concerns health insurance and nursing care insurance. As a part-time self-employed person, you do not need to insure yourself additionally in health insurance. And this is actually a significant financial advantage because if you start your self-employment directly as a full-time endeavor, then in the very beginning, health insurance is often the much higher expense. I have recorded a video on the whole topic of health insurance for self-employed people, which I will link to in the top right corner if you haven't thought about the entire topic yet. But for many founders, health insurance is, as it turns out, actually the much greater evil than the tax. And as a part-time self-employed person, you are actually exempt from that at first. You are essentially covered by your main job's health insurance. However, this cannot go on indefinitely. You can't just look for a main job now, earn some money, pay health insurance, and then make hundreds of thousands in your part-time job and think, well, this is just my part-time job, so I don't have to pay health insurance anymore. The part-time business must always be of secondary importance both in terms of time and finances. This means you should, in general, spend significantly less time on your self-employment than on your main job. And you should make less profit in your side business than you earn from your main job. And you are not allowed to have any employees in your part-time business. So having mini jobbers is okay. However, if you start having employees who are subject to social security in your part-time business, you will eventually lose your status as a part-time business in terms of health insurance. The boundaries of when something is still considered a part-time business and when it is classified as full-time self-employment are not very strict. I actually recommend speaking with your health insurance early on. In my experience, health insurance companies are significantly more pragmatic and communicative than tax offices. Therefore, if your side business ever grows to the point where you think, well, this is actually my main focus, then briefly talk to your health insurance provider and ask how this might change for you and whether it might make more sense to operate your side business as a full-time business now. But brings us to the third point. I keep hearing one does not have to pay income tax on the first earnings from their self-employment due to a basic tax allowance. That's correct. There is basically a basic contribution that we can all earn before we pay income tax. It is roughly around every year. It is also raised a little bit. You can just check the basic tax allowance and the corresponding year. If you're watching this video, then you will see how much you can earn tax-free for income tax purposes. But and this is the very important point, this applies to your total income. 
This means that if you, as an employee, already earn a gross annual salary, that exceeds the basic tax allowance, then you are already well above this what threshold. Then you actually have to pay income tax on every euro you earn from your part-time self-employment alongside your main job because your income from self-employment is always added to your employment income. And that is why the statement is generally true that as a part-time self-employed person, you actually have a higher tax burden on your income from self-employment than full-time self-employed individuals. Because full-time self-employed individuals start with zero dollars income, but a part-time self-employed person still has the salary you can build on top of. And with that, we come to the fourth misunderstanding and error. Specifically, we have now considered the income tax. So, with income tax, your salary and your self-employment income are basically added together. And I hear exactly the same thing quite often with other types of taxes. Because if you are self-employed, including part-time self-employment, you not only have to deal with income tax, but also with value-added tax and possibly with trade tax. And I often hear uncertainty about whether one has to consider the salary in relation to sales tax and trade tax. The clear answer is... No, you do not have to. For income tax, your total income is summed up because the income tax relates to you as an individual, such as when it comes to value-added tax, your salary plays no role at all. This is especially crucial when we talk about the small business regulation. The small business regulation is a simplification rule for value-added tax, VAT. This means that you do not have to show VAT on your invoices, nor do you have to submit advance VAT returns or file a VAT declaration. This means that the whole thing is already a bureaucratic simplification, at least. However, you can only take advantage of this regulation if you stay below certain revenue limits. It is crucial to determine whether your salary counts towards these revenue limits or not. In this case, your employment status has no role and no influence at all in any calculations regarding value-added tax. So you can earn money from your main job without any problems and still choose the small business regulation for part-time self-employment if your self-employment is below these limits. It's somewhat similar with trade tax. The trade tax is calculated a bit differently. As a business owner, you are pay trade tax, but only if your profit exceeds a certain amount for the year. And I also regularly notice that people count their salary among these, similar to how it is done with income tax. And no, when it comes to trade tax, your salary doesn't matter at all. The name actually says it all, to be honest. The trade tax only applies to your business operations and not to your employment relationship, which you still have in parallel, even if it is your main job. And that brings us to the fifth point, which is a topic you will encounter in accounting. If you have a main job, meaning a salaried job, and are self-employed part-time, then you may have costs that apply to both. So you buy, for example, a desk, a desk chair, a monitor at home, or you have a home office. And you are now, of course, using your desk for both your employment when you work from home and for your self-employment. And then the question always arises, where do you set the whole thing? Yes, you can deduct your desk from taxes, but do you categorize it as business expenses and then deduct it from your salary? You would do that in the Annex N of your income tax return. Or do you handle the whole thing in your bookkeeping? So, should you record this desk in your bookkeeping and deduct it there? So what is somehow better? Do you just take the type of income that is higher? Or how do you do it exactly? And I would strongly advise you to always deduct such costs which are not so directly attributable in your self-employment. For two reasons. First, if you are subject to value-added tax, then you have a right to deduct input tax. So when I buy a desk at IKEA, the amount I pay is a gross amount and includes value-added tax, such as VAT. And if I am subject to value-added tax, meaning I have not chosen the small business regulation, I can actually reclaim this VAT amount in the context of the VAT advance return. This means that in my self-employment, I ultimately pay less for the desk, about 19%, than I would if I were to allocate this desk as business expenses in the tax return form N to my employment relationship. Secondly, in your employment relationship, you have a flat rate for business expenses. This means that if you have no costs related to your employment, such as travel expenses, you can apply your flat rate. This is currently the case in the year 2024. This means you can always deduct it, even if you haven't spent a cent on your employment relationship. So if you buy a desk now for $800, that expense is lost. 
because you still take the flat rate, which is higher, then it is indeed more advantageous to take this flat rate in your employment relationship and additionally deduct the desk in your accounting. This way, you have the flat rate for your employment and the desk for your self-employment. Therefore, if you are unsure, you should generally deduct costs in your self-employment rather than in your employment relationship. I hope I was able to help you with this video. If you have any more questions about your part-time business, you can find a comment section below this video. It's just waiting for your question. Ask your questions there, and I will try to answer them there as well. If a lot of questions come in, I will just record another video, so it is definitely worth subscribing to this channel. And if you are self-employed, then you need a lot of things. You need a business account, you need accounting software, and you might need a tax advisor. I have a range of recommendations. You can find them linked below in the video description. I can link them again. Or you can just go ahead and watch another video on this channel right now. For example, this one or this one. One.